If you learned that your partner had betrayed you, how would you respond? It wasn't an easy answer for one individual. He had to choose between his love for his kids and his wounded heart, and that choice would affect the course of the next 18 years of his life. This is a tale of sacrifice, treachery, and finally, salvation. You can get your daily fix of real-life drama at Stories. Mike stared at the text message on his phone, his hands shaking. His whole world was falling apart. The words on the screen burned into his brain. I saw Sarah with another man. They were kissing. I'm so sorry, Mike. The message was from his mother. Mike felt like he couldn't breathe. How could Sarah do this to him? To their family? He heard the front door open and close. Sarah was home. Mike's heart pounded in his chest as he stood up from the couch. He had to confront her. He had to know the truth. Sarah walked into the living room, her smile fading as she saw Mike's face. What's wrong? She asked, her voice filled with concern. With his voice hardly audible above a whisper, Mike raised his phone. Is that accurate? Struggling to control his feelings, he asked. Sarah's eyes widened in terror as her face turned pale. What topic are you discussing? Mike could see the remorse written all over her face, even though she stammered. Please don't mislead me, Mike yelled, causing Sarah to startle. His voice echoed through the house, years of trust and love crumbling with each word. My mom saw you. She saw you kissing another man. How could you do this to me? To our kids? Tears filled Sarah's eyes, spilling down her cheeks. Mike, I, I can explain, she pleaded, her voice shaking. Mike laughed, but there was no joy in it. The sound was hollow, filled with pain and disbelief. Explain, explain how you broke our wedding vows, how you threw away our whole life together. His voice cracked on the last word, the weight of his emotions threatening to overwhelm him. Sarah sat down heavily on the couch, her shoulders shaking as she cried. I'm sorry, she said, her words muffled by her sobs. I didn't mean for it to happen. It just did. Mike paced back and forth, his anger growing with each step. The room felt too small, the walls closing in on him. Who is he? He demanded. Do I know him? Sarah shook her head, not daring to look Mike in the eye. No, you don't know him. He's someone I met at work. Do you love him? Mike asked, dreading the answer but needing to know. Sarah hesitated, and in that moment of silence, Mike felt his heart breaking all over again. I, I have feelings for him, she finally admitted. But I don't love him. Not like I love you. Mike felt like he'd been punched in the stomach. The room spun around him, and he had to grab onto the back of a chair to steady himself. If you loved me, you wouldn't have done this, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. For hours, they talked and argued. The sun set and rose again, but neither of them noticed. Sarah tried to explain her feelings, saying she felt lonely and unappreciated. She talked about how Mike's long hours at work had left her feeling neglected, how she'd started to doubt whether he still loved her. Mike couldn't believe what he was hearing. He thought they had a good life together. They had three wonderful children, Emma, the youngest at 12, Jack, 15, and Lily, 17. They had a nice house and a good neighborhood, and both had successful careers. How could Sarah throw it all away? I worked those long hours for us, Mike said, his voice hoarse from talking all night. To give you and the kids everything you wanted, how could you think I didn't love you? Sarah wiped her eyes, her makeup long since ruined by her tears. I know you love me, Mike, but love isn't just about providing. It's about being there, really being present. When was the last time we had a real conversation that wasn't about the kids or bills? Mike opened his mouth to argue, then closed it again. He couldn't remember. As the sun began to rise, painting the sky in shades of pink and gold, Mike made a decision. I'm going to talk to a lawyer, he said his voice tired but determined. I need to know what my options are. Sarah's eyes widened in fear, fresh tears spilling down her cheeks. Are you going to divorce me? She asked, her voice small and frightened. Mike shook his head, running a hand through his disheveled hair. I don't know, but I need to protect myself and our kids. The next day, after a sleepless night, Mike met with a lawyer. The news wasn't good. Because they had been married for so long and had kids together, a divorce would be messy and expensive. The lawyer, a kind-faced woman named Janet, explained that Mike might have to pay Sarah alimony, and they'd have to split everything they owned. But she's the one who cheated, Mike protested, feeling a fresh wave of anger wash over him. Janet nodded sympathetically. I understand, Mike, but in the eyes of the law, that doesn't always matter as much as we think it should. 
The court's primary concern will be the welfare of your children. When Mike got home, he found Sarah sitting on the couch, her eyes red and puffy from crying. He told her what the lawyer said, watching as her face crumpled. How can you do this to me? She cried, her voice rising hysterically. You're ruining my life. Mike couldn't believe what he was hearing. The unfairness of it all hit him like a tidal wave, threatening to drown him in anger and hurt. I'm ruining your life, he shouted back, his composure finally breaking. You're the one who cheated. What about our kids? Did you think about how this would affect them? Sarah wiped her eyes, her shoulders slumping in defeat. Of course I thought about them, she said quietly. That's why I want to fix this. Can't we try to work it out? For the kids? Mike wanted to say no. Every fiber of his being screamed at him to pack his bags and leave, to never look back. But as he opened his mouth to refuse, he saw a family photo on the mantel. It was from their last vacation, all five of them smiling on a sunny beach. His children's happy faces stared back at him, and he felt his resolve weaken. He thought about his kids, about how sad and confused they would be if he left. As her family collapsed, he pictured Lily, who was about to enter her senior year of high school, attempting to concentrate on her college applications. He considered Jack, who was already dealing with the stresses of adolescence and now had to handle his parents' divorce on top of everything else. Emma, who was still very little and naive, was unable to comprehend her father's move out of the house. Finally, after what felt like hours, but was probably only a few minutes, Mike spoke. We can try counseling, he said, his voice heavy with reluctance. But I'm not making any promises. Sarah's face lit up with hope, but Mike held up a hand to stop her before she could speak. This doesn't mean I forgive you, he said firmly, and it doesn't mean we're okay. It just means I'm willing to try for the kid's sake. For the next few weeks, Mike and Sarah went to a marriage counselor. At first it was hard. They argued a lot, rehashing old grievances and hurts. Mike still felt angry and betrayed, while Sarah swung between defensive anger and tearful remorse. But slowly, things started to get a little better. Under the guidance of their counselor, a patient woman named Dr. Reynolds, they learned to talk to each other without yelling. They started to understand the underlying issues that had led to Sarah's affair. Dr. Reynolds helped them see that their marriage had problems long before Sarah's infidelity. Mike worked long hours and often forgot to show Sarah how much he cared. He'd gotten so caught up in providing for his family that he'd forgotten to be present for them. Sarah, feeling neglected and unappreciated, had started looking for attention elsewhere. This didn't make what Sarah did okay, but it helped Mike understand why it happened. It also forced him to confront his own role in the breakdown of their marriage. For a while, things seemed to be getting better. Mike and Sarah were talking more, really listening to each other for the first time in years. They started having date nights again, leaving the kids with Mike's mom and going out to dinner or a movie. They both tried hard to make their marriage work, to rebuild the trust and love that had been shattered. But even though things were better on the surface, Mike couldn't forget what Sarah had done. The wound was too deep, the betrayal too profound. Every time she was late coming home from work, he wondered if she was with someone else. When her phone buzzed with a text message, he had to fight the urge to grab it and see who it was from. He didn't trust her anymore, and he didn't know if he ever would again. Mike's mom kept telling him to leave Sarah. She broke your heart once, she said during one of their weekly phone calls. She'll do it again. You deserve better than this, Mike. But Mike didn't want to break up his family. He loved his kids so much, and he didn't want them to grow up in a broken home. He remembered his own parents' divorce, how lost and alone he had felt as a child. He couldn't bear the thought of putting his own children through that pain. So Mike made a hard decision. He would stay with Sarah until their youngest child, Emma, turned 18 and went to college. Then he would leave. It wasn't perfect, but he thought it was the best thing for his kids. He would give them a stable home, two parents under one roof for as long as he could. The years went by slowly. Mike and Sarah lived together, but things were never the same. They were like two strangers sharing a house, going through the motions of a marriage without any of the love or intimacy. They took care of the kids and tried to make their home happy, but the love and trust between them was gone. Mike threw himself into his children's lives, determined to be the best father he could be. He never missed a soccer game or a school play. He helped with homework, taught them to drive, and was always there with a listening ear and a shoulder to cry on. Sarah, too, tried to be a good mother, 
She baked cookies for bake sales, chaperoned school dances, and did her best to create a warm and loving home. But there was always a sadness in her eyes, a regret that never quite went away. The kids, perceptive as children often are, sensed the tension between their parents. Lily, the oldest, asked Mike once why he and Mom never kissed anymore. Mike had fumbled for an answer, finally telling her that sometimes grown-ups show love in different ways. He wasn't sure she believed him. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the day came. Emma, their baby, was going off to college. As they helped her move into her dorm room, Mike felt a mix of emotions, pride in his daughter, sadness at this chapter of his life ending, but also a sense of relief. He had kept his promise. He had stayed for his kids. Now it was time to think about himself. That night, after they got home from dropping Emma off, Mike told Sarah his decision. They sat at the kitchen table, the same one where they'd shared family dinners for years, now eerily quiet without the chatter of children. I'm leaving, he said, his voice calm but firm. I've stayed all these years for the kids, but I can't do it anymore. Sarah's face crumpled, tears filling her eyes. Please, Mike, she begged. We can start over. Now that the kids are gone, we can focus on us. We can fall in love again. Mike shook his head sadly. I'm sorry, Sarah, but I don't think I can ever trust you again. And without trust, there can't be love. Sarah cried and pleaded, but Mike's mind was made up. The next day, he packed his things and moved out. It was hard. Harder than he had ever imagined, but he knew it was the right thing to do. The kids were upset when they found out. They didn't understand why their parents were splitting up now, after all these years. Mike sat them down and explained as best he could. He told them he loved them very much, and that he had stayed all these years because he wanted to be there for them. He said that even though he and their mom weren't together anymore, they would always be a family. Over time, the kids started to understand. They saw that their dad was happier now. He smiled more and seemed more relaxed. They still spent lots of time with him, and their relationship grew even stronger. Mike was there for every important moment. Lily's law school graduation, Jack's wedding, Emma's first art show. He was a constant presence in their lives, a rock they could always depend on. Mike learned that being alone didn't mean being lonely. He had his kids, his friends, and his work. He started to do things he enjoyed, but had given up over the years. He took up painting again, finding solace in the sweep of a brush across canvas. He joined a hiking club, rediscovering his love for nature and adventure. For the first time in years, he felt truly happy. Sarah struggled more with the divorce. She had thought Mike would stay forever, even though things weren't good between them. She realized too late how much she had hurt him and how much she had lost because of her mistake. She went to therapy, trying to understand why she had risked everything for a brief affair. It was a long, painful process, but slowly she began to heal. Years passed. Mike's kids grew up and had families of their own. He was a wonderful grandfather, always there for his grandkids with a smile, a hug, and a funny story. His children respected and loved him for the sacrifice he had made, staying in an unhappy marriage for their sake. They saw in him an example of true strength and love. One day, Mike's oldest son, Jack, asked him if he regretted staying with Sarah all those years. They were sitting on Mike's porch, watching Jack's kids play in the yard. Mike thought for a moment, then shook his head. No he said, a small smile on his face. It was hard, probably the hardest thing I've ever done. But I got to see you kids every day. I got to be there for all the important moments in your lives. That was worth everything to me. As he looked at his son, now a grown man with kids of his own, Mike felt proud. He had made it through the hardest time in his life. He had kept his promise to his children, and even though his marriage had ended, he had found happiness again. Mike knew that life didn't always have happy endings like in the movies. Sometimes people make mistakes that can't be fixed. Sometimes love isn't enough to keep two people together. But he also knew that even in the hardest times, there can be moments of joy and love. He had found those moments with his children and grandchildren, and that was enough for him. As he hugged his son goodbye, watching him leave with his own family, Mike felt at peace. He had learned that true strength isn't about never getting hurt. It's about getting back up when you're knocked down. About doing the right thing even when it's hard. And in the end, that's exactly what he had done. Mike went back inside his house, closing the door on the setting sun. He picked up a framed photo of his kids and grandkids, smiling at their happy faces, 
Even though he did not receive the happily ever after he had hoped for, he did receive something as precious, a life full of love, respect, and the assurance that he had always given his all for the people who mattered most.